Now this series is tied at 2-2. If I told you going into Dallas when the Suns were up 2-0 in the series, would you have imagined that we would be here now and what we're seeing? Huh. I mean, really, no. And not only that, but Dallas wins a game where Luka is really not that efficient. If you never saw the Dallas Mavericks play this year and you saw this game, you would have sworn Dorian Finney-Smith is their best player and it's a team-oriented team, team. But Luka, inefficient with the jump shot, but the Dallas Mavericks filled in with all those three-point shots. Dorian Finney-Smith closing with the three-point shots. Uh, Bertans hitting them in, in the first half. And all of a sudden, they started to avalanche, and Phoenix had no answer. Yeah, we tried to figure out, okay, when's the last time that Dallas hit 20 or more threes in a game? In the first round, when they hit a franchise playoff mm-hmm. record 22, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith was one three-pointer away from tying the franchise record by singular player. But Luka, like you said, one for ten from three-point range. The non-Luka members of the Mavericks, 19 for 33. We always hear Shaq and Chuck talk about, oh, the others. We need a game from the other. This was that game for the Dallas Mavericks. Dorian Finney-Smith, the leader of those others in this game. But all those other guys really stepped up in a night where Luka was off. Yeah, I mean, you had all the mothers around the country getting flowers, and Dorian Finney-Smith also got some flowers. And you can pass them around. You see Bertans there hitting shots. Uh, it, you know, just, it, it was just contagious. Dorian Finney-Smith, everyone's following his lead rather than Luka's lead. And, you know, look, I mean, when the Mavericks are playing like this, you know, they look pretty good. But, of course, how much of this can they sustain from this game to the next? That's really going to be the trick. Again, they work best when the ball's in Luka's hand and he's creating and everything, and all of a sudden, the, the, you know, the, he's getting the double and the triple teams. But Phoenix said, you know what? We're going to leave some, some of his teammates open and let them beat us. Well, you know, that was their choice. They left them open, left Dorian Finney-Smith open, left Bertans open, Spencer Dinwiddie open. And all of a sudden, you know, that strategy backfired on Phoenix. It's easy to talk about how the Mavs heated the Suns up from three-point range. But defensively, hello, that was a different level because it's becoming consistent now. Three straight games in which the Suns have 17 or more turnovers. And then Chris Paul fouls out out of, out of this game after having seven turnovers in the last game. That seems to be a big red flag for the Phoenix Suns as this series is progressing. Yeah, it was very tough for Chris Paul. First of all, he has the turnovers um, in the previous do game. You think the, what do you think of these fouls? I, you know, look, a handful of them were pretty questionable. What about this one? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, the, the referee has to be in the right position, right? Sometimes the officials are not in the right position to make the best calls. And, you know, again, this one right here in particular. The I one guess he fouls he, out. Well, I mean, look, I think he put his right hand out. But did it really cause a foul? Did it cause for Jalen Brunson to fall to the floor? I'm not so sure. Um, I thought they were questionable. A handful of them were questionable. But again, having said that, if you're Chris Paul, you're a veteran, sometimes if you've got four fouls, you've got five fouls, you can't put yourself in a position for the officials to make a judgment call like that. Yeah, for Chris Paul, four fouls in the first half, played just 23 minutes, uh, had picked up that fifth foul three minutes into the second half. I mean, he was really limited by that foul trouble.